Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Cypress tutorial, we are going to get started with the sample application and then from here on, we'll be understanding everything that you'll require to start your Cypress automation, writing the scripts, identifying elements, and then building the framework. Okay, so what app we are going to use is basically the sample app. Uh, it is a sample banking app from Parasoft, uh, Parabank and this is what we are going to use right so if i go to this particular app you'll see that we have a certain functionality here we'll be utilizing register we'll be using the login uh creating the accounts withdrawing funds or, or transferring the funds etc so a couple of scenarios will be automating um end to end uh, for this particular whole series and then in the advanced section we'll be having all of that in ci cd pipeline and then execute that right so let's quickly go ahead and understand the first and very basic thing how you are going to locate the web elements right now till now we have just looked at launching the url okay so if i go ahead from the app cypress app let me start the testing so it will launch the ui the cypress app and then from here i can execute the test cases that i have written okay so in the e2e so if i go here you will see this first test is where i have updated the url okay now i'll go ahead and execute it now this will obviously go ahead and execute the test and it will launch the app because in the script i just have mentioned cy.visit launch the app right so basically it will go ahead and open this particular app here okay so now you can see say for example now i have to go ahead and start writing the script to click here in the username click on the password and then type in the username type in the password click on the login button right so how we can basically go ahead and do that now prior to having this customer login we have to make sure that we have the user available with us right so, so the first thing we have to do is we have to register ourselves in order to use this particular app so the first step will be to do the registration functionality test is to click on the register button which will open the register page now how will cypress be able to understand that where it has to click right so this is basically possible through the web element locator strategies right in the selenium we know that there are many locator strategies so um, by xpath by css selector name id all of those locator strategies are present in selenium but in cypress you can only have the css selectors okay when i say css selectors you can use the name id attributes etc obviously in the css selector as well if you want to use xpath in cypress it doesn't come out of the box you have to rely on the plugin and that's not recommended with css selector we'll be doing everything the whole automation and that is absolutely possible and fine okay now in order to write a css selector i have a complete full series of an hour uh, more than an hour on all the css selector locating strategies that you can use in any automation tool that is basically the web automation for example selenium or uh, cypress and you can use wherever these locator css selector locator strategies are used you can use that uh, strategy to locate the element and go ahead with now say for example i have to locate this username so what i have done is i have created a cheat sheet basically to give you a context of what you need to understand from the locator perspective okay and prior to that as well i would recommend you to install this xpath plugin which is css uh, which is basically the uh, selectors hub okay so in order to install it in any browser you basically go to the extensions of your browser okay and then manage extension and you search and install that particular plugin and i have already explained it in a separate tutorial how to install and how to basically open this particular plugin so that shouldn't be a problem at all once you have installed this selector sub plugin it will help you to get the locators most of the time you will be getting the perfect locator but before you rely on any tool it's always recommended that you go ahead and learn what the strategies are so what this is what we are going to learn in this particular video so how we basically what is the very basic syntax or css selector syntax is the tag name okay the attribute name and the attribute value okay so you this tag name is you, you can specify and you can ignore if say for example you just want to use the id this tag name is not required you can just say hash and the element id if you are selecting by the class name you just say dot and the element id and when i say element id and the attribute what exactly it means let's go to this username i'll simply go ahead and right click and click on inspect this is the browser functionality in edge and in chrome you will get similar uh, and 
all uh, most mostly all all of the browser you you can go to the dev tools and then see what all the background dom looks like and then from here we can start writing our locators right and a locator because we are working with cypress we'll only be working with css selectors okay now what i'll do is i'll simply go ahead in the right side you'll see that i have this double arrow here okay and i'll see selectors hub is selectors hub is is installed okay so i'll simply simply click on selectors hub and you'll see that it will basically start giving me recommendations of all the locators basically you'll see that we have xpath test trigger path jquery and the css selector now with cypress we'll be only using css select all right so you simply we can directly copy it but then we are learning how you can write css selector in case you need it right and most of the time you will be needing it so we'll go ahead and understand the format right now you'll see that this selectors have uh, this locator you'll see that it is absolutely similar to what we have learned for the basic syntax right so the tag name which is input tag right in this particular case if i scroll down here the tag is input this this tag is input there is a div tag p tag right these are all tags then this is the attribute type is the attribute the value is text class is attribute the value of class is input. name is attribute the value of class uh, value of name is username right so these are all attributes so to write a selectors css selector the tag name which is input square bracket any attribute and the value of the attribute this is the very basic syntax okay now if there is an id present for a particular element you simply can have without the tag as well you can simply say okay hash and the id of the element okay so if i say if there is any id here then we can simply say hash and then the ID of that particular whatever the value of that particular locator or that particular element is so I can say okay if say this was the ID of a particular element you just simply say hash test if there is a class attribute which has the value for example here I have the input so I can simply say dot and then the class name okay and selectors hub will automatically show you that there are there there are two classes you will see that th this number shown so if I say input, then you'll see it has basically more than that. Okay. So with class as well, if there is a unique class name, which has the unique value, then you can say dot and then in, if not, then you simply have to combine it with the, with different attribute, multiple attributes as well. And then also you might be required to have the tag name as well. Okay. So for example, in this case, I can say, okay, input, and then we know the class name is input so you'll say input dot input right so this is how you are going to write if you have the class name but in this case still it is not recognized then we'll simply say okay input and then we'll say whatever is unique right so you'll see that we are getting auto suggestions in selectors hub that's the whole beauty of it that you will be easily be able to understand but then in that particular case you need to still learn how you are going to write so we have understood about the id about the class right you can say dot tag name dot class name tag name hash if there is an id present okay and then using other web element attribute so similar thing for example if there is a there is other web element attribute for example name is there for example type is there right so the tag name simple and then the type the type of it okay and the value of the attribute which is text okay so we can write like all right then there is other advanced css selector wherein you can have the mix of tag id and class say for example class name is also common for a couple of things id is also common then you can have a mix of id and class how you will do it for example i can have a tag name then if there is a class name then i'll say dot class value whatever the value of the class is and then i'll have the attribute another attribute of it and the attribute value of it okay so for example in this particular case if we go here if i have to identify this input tag so i'll say i do have the class name so i'll say the value of the class is input so i can say input dot input but then still it is not recognizing so i'll use another attribute say for example i use type in this particular case so i'll use type in the square bracket and then put the value of that particular attribute right so tech okay it should be in there and you will see that one element is matched all right so this is basically how you are going to write your advanced css selectors okay then if you have the tag name so tag name and then hash because hash is for the tag name dot is for the class name so tag name hash id of the tag uh, sorry the the hash is for the id and dot is for the class okay so tag name 
hash the id value okay and then attribute and similar structure that we have seen right then we have the option of the substring as well so you can match the prefix of the text all right so you can say okay whatever tag and then square bracket you i can say for example the name starts with country okay country underscore c or there is a after c there is some dynamic value so i can say this exponent sign a sign okay for the attribute okay so in this case for example this name all right so i'll say input tag okay and i can say you'll see that name right so name exponent is equal to user i can also say user just user all right because i am searching for the input tag wherever the name starts with user i don't care what what is afterwards all right that's how you are going to match the next matching is about the suffix this was about the prefix if you have to match the suffix then you just put the dollar against that attribute okay so i'll say i want to match the suffix so i'll say is there any input tag where the name value ends with user okay so if i say enter there are no matches right but if i say is there any attribute which has the name ending as name okay so i'll say name and you'll see that one match has found because this is ending right so username ends with name and that that is where it is matching similarly the next one is basically any substring in between so you put the star there all right so this is these are some of the very basic css selector strategies and most of the time these are sufficient for your web elements okay now the next very important one is the child and sub child okay so for example here expand it so direct child so there is a child combinator greater than sign so i can say okay first selector all right and then followed by the child so which this is the direct child for example in this particular case if i say div okay this div who is the direct child of this particular div this input right this is the direct child so if i say okay i say div and then forward slash okay you will see the direct child is input so i can say input all right i want to have a div which has a direct child input okay and you will see three matches there and now i can have the specific attribute for this input tag to match it okay so this is sign for the direct child getting the direct child similar to what in the x path we have the forward slash right and then there is a another thing for the sub child which is basically child or sub child it will get all the child and all the sub child below it so that is the space in between right so i can say i want all the child and sub child okay so just put a space in there after the key tag or after the main tag right which is div so it will get all the child below it and all the sub child so i'll say enter and you'll see all the child and sub child let me put another so for, say for example form okay i'll say form space and then i want all the child and sub child div below it right you will see it has given me this div right there is another div which is child another div right these are the only three divs that are present okay let me see if i can find something else which has which also gives me let's say i have a div and then below div i just want to check the how many form fields are there okay so it could be direct child or it could be a sub child it's just unique it is just one form element that's fine i think see the concept is what you need to understand right so basically in with the space it is going to pick all the childs below it right if i say the arrow here okay or greater than sign that means only the first child so basically if you'll see p here right so only the child elements only the child elements okay so form and then the child element but with the space it will pick the child element okay for sure these elements and if there is any another child below this p tag as well which is p as well then it will pick that as well okay so that is the difference between the greater than and the space okay descendant combinator okay this is descendant combinator so these are the key locator strategies that you need to remember okay and don't this cheat sheet is good enough once you start using it you will be you know very handy it will be handy you won't be needing help of you know tool too much you will be you will be understanding you know as soon as you will get the locator being provided by selectors up for example you see this selectors locator right you will be able to identify yeah this is good one i'll go ahead and copy and use it okay that is where this basic understanding and learning of the locator is important okay so this is how we are going to locate the web elements 
on any web page that we are going to automate okay so now we have understood the locator strategies let's quickly go ahead and locate the web element username password and then click on login button on our script rather than just launching the web page okay so if i have to select or locate this username okay and if i have to go ahead and write it myself okay so let me go ahead this i know that this is the input tag okay so i'll say okay this is input tag and then what is the locator for it so this is basically if i go input and the i know that there is a name okay name value is password so i'll simply or a name value is password name value is username right so there is a name value which is a username okay so i want to put username and the password as well so i'll say okay i'll use name and the value is username okay and enter i'll see that one element is matching so i can simply copy okay and then i can use it in my script so i'll go ahead and then here i can use it so now in order to get a particular attribute or basically find a particular attribute in cypress you simply have to say cy dot get okay and you will see that if i say get you will see that it is basically will get the locator okay and then you can do different action you can chain the actions on on it what exactly you want to do so i can say cy dot get and then i paste in the locator there all right and you will see that the selector all right so whatever the selector is you have to paste in there so i'll simply paste the selector okay and you'll see that name is deprecated all right so any of these warnings you will also see so you have to basically go ahead and find or find another locator okay and then if i say dot as of now i'll simply use it and i'll change it later and then i can say dot and what exactly i have to do so in order to type some values in cypress in a particular text box i can say just say type you'll see that i have started using uh, or pressing ty and you'll see that i have got the method type right and what it will do is it will basically help me to type a particular value within it right so i can say okay type and what exactly i want to type i want to type something okay so say for example i just want to type something as of now all right then similarly for the password okay i'll simply copy the whole command and i'll say name is password i'll change these locators in next video i just want to show you that this will actually go ahead and type in these values okay so now i have saved this and if i save it you'll see that cypress automatically will start rerunning the test okay so there is some issue uh, okay so this has to be in the this is string right so your locator needs to go into the double quotes here because we already have a single quote in there okay and then we have to put in the okay so now you will see that as soon as i'll save it okay as soon as i'll say control s you will see that app will start re-execution okay so you'll see that it has launched and it has typed in username and password success right so the values that has that we have provided in the script have been able to pass in into the username and password and then next i can go ahead and click on login now because i haven't created a login user already so i'll create a new script to click on register provide all the registration detail and get the user account and then we'll go ahead and get started with our test right so as this video is concerned what we have learned we have learned all the locator strategies that you are going to utilize all right then we have also understood how you are going to basically use those locator strategies into your script okay so for example the method get to get the values or basically get the locator and then type start typing in something within the particular locator okay so locator strategies are important make sure you learn these locator strategies i'll put the link of the css selector tutorial that is there i'll also put those videos in this series so you can go through those videos first because once you know the locator strategies automation will become really easy for you because then your scripts won't break because of the locator issues most of the people struggle with locators okay so it doesn't matter how complex you build your framework but if your locators are not robust you your automation is of no value okay so make sure you learn this strategy and use the recommended approach if there is any deprecation warning make sure you change the locator accordingly if there is a, de a deprecation warning within cypress that you see right so that's all for uh, this particular video in the next video we will write the full end-to-end -end script for registration functionality i hope this was helpful thank you very much for watching